Today I had the pleasure of speaking with Nick Erner from Alkane Resources. How are you today, Nick? I'm excellent. Thanks, Tracy. Good to be with you. Nick, uh, we're so delighted to have you. We really want to talk to you and get right into this U.S. Defense Act and how this might affect shareholders for Alkane Resources, as you're clearly the, uh, the front runner for supply for magnet materials worldwide. Yeah, thanks, Tracy. Look, we're, we're really hoping that this provides a catalyst to get Western companies, particularly those that want to supply U.S. defense uh, contracts, moving and motivated to shore up their supply chain. You know, if you look at this, if you look at this act, what it's saying is the US will only be or, or wants its contractors to only buy magnets from uh, allied countries. So th th this excludes buy magnets out of China and Russia. And it's not must happen immediately today because we all know the capacity for that to actually happen is, doesn't exist. But it's saying you know, put your best foot forward, best endeavours, this is where the US government is moving. And so these companies have to act if they want to meet that regulation now or into the, into the future. Yeah. Well, we've been talking and discussing sustainability for a number of years, so we were delighted to see that uh, the US is putting a good foot forward. Of course, you know, they don't have the supply. So let's talk about your timeline for getting to production. It's if, if i if I understand this correct, Nick, and please do correct yeah. me, when you guys are in full production, you'll have the largest supply chain for magnet and battery materials in the world outside of China. Is that correct? Um, I'd, I'd like to think so, but but no, Linus will still be number one in that. So if you look at if you look at Linus's near dimium praseodymium production, you know they're with their um, next program. Um, you know, they're, they're moving towards 6,000 tonnes per annum. You know? And so we, and that, which would put them at about, you know, 15 to 20% of the, of the magnet market. That's as it stands today, not in the expanded demand. We, for Needham and Praseodymium, would be doing 1,200 tonnes. However, we do have the heavy rare earths of Terbium Dysprosium, which, which, which others, others don't, apart from um, Northern Minerals now with their pilot plant. So we have a very good mix of the magnet rare earths and the heavy magnet rare earths. But then, of course, we have you know forty percent of our revenue coming from zirconium, a um, lot of a lot of uses for that. Uh, Ten percent of our revenue coming from hafnium, which is an emerging technology metal. You know, we we see people now using it in some of the latest generation phone phone chips, and then we have um, twenty percent come from niobium. So certainly, we'd be one of the largest complexes and revenue generators. You know, that's in terms of you know that's nearly five hundred million US of revenue a year. You know, so that's a substantial revenue base. But we would we would be definitely one of the front runners, absolutely. And more importantly, we we do not have offtake into China or a, or a large Chinese shareholding either, which really means we can tick those U.S. defence boxes. Well, I, I'm I'm still certain that uh, most of the investors out there may not be clear on how unique this uh, criti critical material market is. Now, I was reading in your quarterly activities report that your project, yeah. your Dubbo project that we're referencing, could generate 4.7 billion free cash flow at the 20-year base case. Can you just talk to us a little bit more about really the size and what you could actually be producing at Dubbo? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Th thanks. So, yes, it, like I alluded to before, it's a, it's a polymetallic ore body. You know, we the, the, the classic ones, of course, copper, gold or nickel, cobalt. In our case, zirconium, hafnium, niobium and rare earth elements. And so if you look at that revenue stream, you know, um, in Australian dollars, you know, nearly 600 million a year um, and then 4.7 billion, including a ramp up over 20 years. And that's just the start of it you know this is a over 75 year ore body we have adjacent another adjacent ore body we don't even really talk about because once you move past 20 years you know people are saying oh you know it the scale of it surpasses them so we would be putting you know a, a billion a billion us worth of plant down to make all of these streams and revenues and it would be a very large hydrometallurgical facility um, producing very refined products quite unique for australia you know we, we typically do you know direct shipped iron ore or coal but here we are talking about separated rare earths, um, high purity zirconias and hafnias. It's it's qu quite an exciting development and could, 
Yeah, like you say, a lot of te technology metals. Well, I think uh, I read as well that right now there's a what, a 6 to 10 percent compound demand for magnet materials year after year. You're currently not beholden to mm. the Chinese with any offtake agreements in place. Correct. You're debt free. You've got uh, some revenue just on the side. What are you doing about 60 million a year right now with your gold revenue? Yeah, we're up to, you know, you're right. At the moment, I've got uh, 80 million Australian in the bank. Um, you know, not enough to start a project at this scale, but certainly enough to mean that we don't have a capital overhang in the market. You know, so a lot of others, uh, in order to, you know, have to continue to do hit the equity market in order to move through DFS approvals. We've done all of that. That's all in our past. You know, we've purchased the land we're on, state and federal government approvals, fully engineered by Hatch at different cases. You know, we are ready to rumble. And, um, and so, yeah, and a successful gold business, we're making a decision on the board, do we go underground there? You know, we're, yeah, it's, it's, it's pretty exciting uh, for us. We're actually a gold production company that has this large project that we've funded. So, yeah, we're, we're, we're almost uniquely positioned in that, in that space. Well, of course, Investor Intel has been following Alcane Resources for uh, for nine years now, and we're aware of the fact that you have some of those formidable leaders, not only in your management team. I mean, one of your members, I think, is celebrating 30 years in management, yeah. uh, but yeah. you also have some extraordinary board members. So what should we as shareholders anticipate uh, this next quarter or two, especially with this U.S. Defense Act? I'm wondering if that's going to give you any extra uh, mileage. Oh, look, we're, we're really we're really hoping so. So I'll, t I'll talk about that differently. So, so our board, you know, we our largest shareholder is, um, you know, Ian Gandel. He he's a you know quite a renowned mining investor. It comes from a, a, a very successful family in uh, real estate and and shopping as well. Um, very wealthy family. Um, we have um, you know Tony Lefleen from he he has an investment banking background. We have Ian Chalmers, whom you mentioned, very successful explorationist, over 40 years on the ground and 30 years involved with this project. And we have Gavin Smith, who's the CEO for Bosch uh, Australia, so very well connected internationally with trade, understands the European market, devices market in, in great debt. So we have quite a good board in order to deliver this. What we're really working on and continue to work on is seeking out which companies are now under enough pressure or have enough line of sight going forward to say, yep, I'm going to commit to that offtake. And that's always on our horizon. And it's very difficult to tell in a negotiation, is that is that two weeks away or is that two months away? Or are people going to sit around doing nothing and just take more and more pain and is it two years away? You know, I, I really feel feel, and I, you know, I, I don't know whether you're feeling the same thing in North America, I really feel that people are saying, okay, I need to act. A lot of people have worked through, righto, I, I understand what I'm doing in lithium. I understand what I'm doing in cobalt. Mm, okay, now let's look at, at, at rare earths and, and, and shoring that up as well. Well, I got to tell you, your valuation must be arguably one of the best buys on the market. Can you comment on that? Oh. Look, I'd like I'd like to think so, and you know we've seen we've seen um, you know we've seen our directors uh, buying at prices ab above this. You know we, we put out our annual accounts, you know within the next four weeks. Um, you know we, we've already talked about those results now quarterly. Look, we we think so. You know at the moment um, our valuation is almost cash backed. You know and we have an active gold mine, very strong exploration pedigree, a lot of gold exploration ground and a project uh, ready to execute subject to financing. So, yeah, we, you know, we, we, we think we're undervalued, but, you know, we're only, uh, you know, as a board, we're only a small portion of people that can actually, well, we're even restricted from buying and selling shares. So, um, you know, the broader market will do it. I think, Tracy, that when we secure an offtake agreement and people say, oh, hang on, this is really happening, you know, these guys are going to get this done, I think that, there will be a, a very strong re-rating. Yeah. Well, Nick, I couldn't agree with you more. And thank you so much for joining us again. It's always a pleasure to get an update on Alcane. Thank you. Really appreciate your time.